Hi everyone, I'm Kelly O'Horo, and this is Adaptable Behavior Explained. Hi everybody, thank you so much for tuning in today to Adaptable. I'm Kelly O'Horo, and I'm glad to have you here. I wanted to talk with you today about the topic of uh, teletherapy or telehealth versus in-person therapy. A lot of people are struggling to decide what approach they wanna take and they're um, torn because there's pros and cons to both. So we're just gonna dig into that a little bit today and talk about some of those pros and cons. Before COVID, we were really an in-person modality and in-person experience. Most people didn't go outside of the box to do online therapy. And um, with, with COVID, we kind of had no choice. We all had to separate, of course, as you all know, and we had to adapt and we had to become flexible. And so with that, we learned a whole bunch about, uh, about online therapy as an option. There's so many positive attributes related to this evolution in our field because we have more choices and with, with more choices, always things can improve. So let's talk first about how do we even decide what it is that we wanna do? Do I wanna go through one of those apps and find an online person or do I wanna look in my community and find an in-person therapist? So let's talk first about effectiveness. Research does show that online therapy can be just as effective as in-person therapy, especially when you use an evidence-based uh, approach like cognitive behavioral therapy or EMDR therapy, uh, eye movement desensitization and reprocessing, which is a really uh, well-researched, bottom-up, trauma-informed therapy. Um, but let's break it down a little bit further. So cognitive behavioral therapy, uh, there's been many programs that have been successful in treating anxiety, depression, and other mental health conditions. For example, there's apps like Wobot um, that use CBT principles to guide people through self-help exercises and coping strategies. Like I've mentioned in many other episodes, we want to make sure we recognize those strategies as a state change activity um, as opposed to a trait change activity. If we want to get to the root of the matter, we have to do bottom-up therapies. And the good news is that even online, we can do bottom-up therapies such as EMDR. EMDR, I've got a whole episode or actually two episodes on how EMDR works. That's the specialty that I have um, and I've been doing for many years. And it involves bilateral stimulation like with eye movements or tapping, and it's been adapted for online sessions. Uh, I love a company called Bilateral iOS. If you're a therapist tuning in, they are my favorite. These uh, gentlemen from Holland got so innovative. They were motivated for the right reasons to create this application for us therapists during COVID because they were former clients and they had an IT specialty and they, they saw a gap and they bridged it during COVID and they offered this app to us for free for so long while they were developing it and it was a game changer. So I have to tell you that there are some really cool apps that help us as therapists and as the client um, working through these things together uh, with apps that make us something that we didn't think could be done by not being in person really super effective on, in an online setting. So with the MDR therapy and the applications that have been invented, we can absolutely use um, these strategies to work on on unresolved things that people come to therapy for. The modality does matter because there's, there one, we have to have research that supports uh, therapeutic modalities and effectiveness so that we're making sure that we are effective and that our outcomes can be counted on. And so there is a lot of um, research for virtual versus face-to-face -face sessions, uh, specifically with uh, CBT therapy and now EMDR therapy. Talk, any talk therapy or video call works well because people can talk about uh, themselves, how they feel, their feelings, and they can have support and connection and validation. The relationship is the basis for outcomes that are strong, and so that can absolutely be achieved in an online setting. And so if we're lonely, if we're disconnected, we're able to have an online uh, experience in a therapeutic setting. We don't have to wait till an in-person option happens. I will caution you that certain experiential therapies would probably not be as effective like um, art or dance therapy, where there's probably something that's lost in the digital realm. So there are certain things that uh, are better in person. Another factor that has to be considered when it comes to con thinking about online versus in-person therapy is the client readiness. So your readiness for change plays a significant role. Some people thrive in a virtual therapy setting. They appreciate convenience, privacy, 
time constraints that don't have to be considered by going into an office, but others might struggle with the format, missing those tangible uh, presence of the therapist uh, and the physical connection that we get. So I'll share a little bit about my personal experience, both as the client and as the therapist uh, that we learned about during the pandemic. So of course, my therapist switched to online therapy when we were in the COVID uh, times. And at first I was like, this is kind of weird. I'm not so sure about it, but uh, it really felt liberating to have sessions uh, from my home. I didn't have to travel up to Scottsdale where my therapist was, but I did miss some of the things about the ambience of being in the therapist's office and feeling that sense of connection. And of course there's that energetic share of having that transference energy of being in presence with somebody and also the space that had been established for me in her office, you know, I lost that. So now I have associations with, you know, my home office or a bedroom or some of these other places that I did therapy from. And that's not necessarily the most ideal situation, but it definitely worked. Now, in my case, my therapist opted not to return to an in-person setting. So I have remained online and I get really effective work done in my online therapy setting. Now, I will say that as a therapist, I experienced absolute change for my clients. I was able to still create uh, the connection and uh, the safety and people were able to do really, really good work, myself as the therapist and treating people online. But I have to say, something I didn't expect to have happen as the therapist is the energetic connection that I felt that was that was about what I got from being a helper and being in a helping position, that was gone in the same way that it, it wasn't the same as it was when I was in person. And I noticed that I was more physically tired. I'm an extrovert and I gain energy from being with others. And so for me, that I noticed was a real change in my energy level being online. But I have to say that there were several clients that I worked with where there was a shift that helped people move past stuck stuff when they went online. So some of my clients, which I didn't even know, had become a little overly reliant or dependent on me during our in-person sessions. And so when they were forced to go online and they had to become more autonomous, um, which I didn't realize was happening, uh, they became more autonomous, they became more independent, they became more self-reliant, and whatever part of them was falling into a dependent strategy in our relationship, that was sort of removed. And people were able to heal in ways that we weren't achieving in the same kind of cadence uh, in person. So some things came out of it that I didn't expect to see, and I found it really fascinating. Uh, another concern that you have to think about when choosing telehealth versus in person are privacy concerns. Online therapy requires a private space, you have to set some boundaries with the people in your life and in your family. Uh, whispering from a closet is not ideal for deep therapeutic work. Although I have to say that during COVID, I did work with a couple people who found themselves in their closet with the doors shut and we had clothes behind them because that was how they could get the most privacy and you know sound reduction. So you have to consider your surroundings and ensure that you have quiet, confidential space uh, for your sessions so that you can get the most out of your experience. Because when we have those distractions in our personal lives, it interrupts your sanctity of your healing space. So you have to definitely be comfortable enough to set boundaries, otherwise you're gonna get interrupted. Then there's some advantages too, like maybe you have an animal that can lay by you during your session and um, offer some emotional support where before you uh, wouldn't have had that. And so we've learned a lot about the pros and cons of being in some of those uh, alternate spaces rather than being in the office specifically. Now, as a therapist, something I noticed is the nonverbal communication is a bit harder to see as the therapist um, and my client is online uh, because we really are responsible for following direct access for things like body language, facial expressions, and even energy. I can feel energy when someone comes in before they say a single word and I'm like, what's going on? So these cues can enhance our therapeutic relationship and they can't fully be replicated online. And so that, um, you know, let's say I'm working with someone and they slouch in their chair, but I can't really tell online. So I can't tell they're falling into a bit of a low or a shame posture 
posture, or maybe everything from the waist up looks great, but their foot is profoundly moving and they have a really strong fidget response that I can't see online. And that's really important information as a therapist. So it's a little harder to pick up on some of those subtle cues in an online setting. Um, but you know, with good attunement, which you can do as a therapist online, we can, uh, we can achieve a pretty good understanding about what's happening in those nonverbal cues. Now we wanna talk about convenience and accessibility. There are people that live in really remote areas and they don't have access to good therapists or geographical barriers. And so being able to just get online and have access, like let's say I live in the outskirts of somewhere in New York and I can have access to all the therapists in New York City, my possibilities of getting good, competent, quality help have drastically improved. So that's one really positive uh, aspect. People that were formerly not able to see someone because of those geographical constraints now have that opportunity. Uh, flexibility is not uh, something we can ignore as well. I have clients that, you know, even though we moved back into in-person, they will still opt for online settings depending on their work schedule or their travel time or their uh, other uh, things that are in their calendar that they need to manage and modify. They're able to go, can I just do online today? Or I have a childcare issue and I can't leave the kiddo at home, but I don't want to cancel my session. So I'm going to jump online. So that convenience can really be a positive thing for people in our busy lives. Comfort's something you wanna think about too. Do I wanna be in an office or do I feel anxious or overwhelmed when I have to drive or when I have to be in a space with more people or if I have to wait in a waiting room for a long time? If I can just stay in my own office and I have the privacy that I can offer myself for the situation and I don't have to worry about uh, discussing sensitive talk topics uh, in my environment, that is really comfortable. But there's you know, the disadvantage of if there's an emergency or a crisis, if you're online, we need to be able to have someone that we can call to help you cope with something because ultimately we can't physically be in your presence. One of the considerations that I have found to be most frustrating for some of my clients uh, and for them to find frustrating is the technological requirements. So if, if someone doesn't have good internet or they don't have, um, they live in a rural area and they don't have a consistent uh, power internet issues, online therapy can create a little bit of difficulty. Uh, while at the same time, the pro of that is I don't have to do a long commute if I'm in a rural setting, and that can be a, a positive. So you have to look at both pros and cons. Something that I've noticed, but not all too much, is that cost can be different. So in a space, we have a lot more overhead. Whereas if I'm a therapist that just works at home, I don't have to necessarily pay rent. And so I might be able to offer therapy at a, a lesser cost. And uh, we don't have to add travel expenses and all the other additional expenses involved with running an office. So remember that whether you choose online or in-person therapy, what matters most is finding a supportive space where you can heal and grow. You still wanna interview the therapist. You still wanna make sure a fit is part of it. And I would say the best case scenario, if you can find this, is an in-person therapist that you can go online if you choose to, or an online therapist where you can come in and do intensive work for a couple hours at a time every couple, three months, just to get both experiences. That's the ideal sweet spot if possible. But ultimately getting help is better than not getting help. So um, make sure that you uh, reach out if you want help. There's lots of good uh, places to find help online and in person. And if you're looking for an in-person therapist that does EMDR therapy, check out emdria.org where you can filter on your zip code. Uh, you could also look at Psychology Today and filter on your zip code, your insurance, uh, people who do telehealth or not, and you can find people in that way. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this helps you determine whether or not you decide to find an online or an in-person therapist. And what we want is that you get the help you deserve because everyone uh, deserves freedom and peace and healing. And until next time, I hope that you move forward leading with love because it'll never steer you wrong.